Hello and welcome into my latest live vlog. My name is Kerry Holzman and today we're going to do the Threadripper naming ceremony. Let me come up a little bit closer because you can't see me behind that big rig. Here we go. All right. Let's make sure everybody can see and hear me okay. It is a hot day outside. Wow. You'll see a list of people I better not do that. I got my microphone right there. You'll see a list of people in the video notes, and those are the people who have contributed $100 or more to have their name placed onto Threddy right here. This is the AMD Ryzen 1950X, and the system was about $4,300 to put together in parts. Actually, I think it was a little bit more than that, but it wouldn't have been made possible without the community, and uh, it's these folks who really... Uh, make a lot of this content possible, both for the equipment that I needed, uh, video capture cards, tripods, etc., as well as uh, uh, buying the parts necessary to do a, a RAID 0 configuration with three 500 gig NVMe drives, which is just insane. And um, I see Spider-Man there in the chat is confirmed. You guys can hear me okay? Good. Thank you. Thank you. And... Um, and as promised, I want to put everybody's name on the case. Now, my initial thought was to put everybody's name down on this one stripe here. But a lot of people think it'll look better to just put it right here on the face because the, the face is completely blank. And the more I think about it, the more I agree. And just for grins, I brought out the old end case M1 just to show how tiny it is in comparison. In fact, let's turn this uh, bad boy on. Let me grab a... A cable and you can see it yeah let me do that let's grab a cable just put that there all right and let's plug this in here and then we'll run this over to the capture card over here let's see it should be this one there we go and then let's get you a dual feed. There we go. Nope, that's not it. There it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on. I will say, I, I fired this up last night, and it's loud. <laughs> Never really realized how loud it was. I've been spoiled. But, uh, no, I just stopped crossing my arms. I got my microphone right there. I'm sure I'm hitting it. I apologize for that. Um, there was a number of BIOS updates available since I last powered it on. There were Windows updates. And there, I think there was a new video card driver or AMD uh, driver. And I did all that last night. I still haven't done the cable management or put the covers on it yet, but I thought we'd do the naming ceremony first. And um, the numbers on this thing are incredible, the, the performance numbers. I just need to start using it, quite frankly. I just need to figure out another cooling solution because this uh, three fan radiator, it just really gets pretty loud although we'll see we'll see once the covers are on it how much that quiets it down but it's the only thing right now uh, that concerns me let me grab my keyboard and mouse from over here and put that up here just for a moment there we go let's get rid of that there we go I just want to show you a crystal disc mark you guys may remember this from before, but I want you to take a look at these numbers. In the meantime, hello to everybody joining us. Uh, David Ruiz in Mexico, Ron Stewart, that guy 1797, Michael C., Joey Polanco, Douglas Biggers, Superman G., hi to all you guys. Ben DeCure, of course, his name is on the list. Look at that read number. Look at it. It's almost 6,000. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? But yeah, you can really hear those fans running. It, it's the radiator that's doing it. It's that Enemax, and I didn't want to buy that Enemax. I never liked Enemax products. I thought I'd give them another shot, and I'm kind of regretting it. There's just not a lot of uh, cooling solutions available right now for the Threadripper. 
I might just switch it out to an air tower or something because I'm not going to overclock it. Bill Leatherland, he's a, a contributor. He's also on this uh, list of contributors for Threadripper. It's folks like like uh, Bill Leatherland, like Ben DeCure, and like everybody else whose names I've printed, I've got them all printed right here, who really make this community uh, flourish, really. And I, I can't say enough uh, how appreciative I am and how grateful and how lucky I am to have viewers like you guys, honestly. And it's an incredible build. It was a lot of fun to do. Mitch Morrison, who you recall, uh, helped me film this. We took it outside because how often do you see a computer being built outside? So we did it outside before it got to the temps that it is now. And uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do these labels because some of them are quite long and some of them are quite short. You know, we've got everything from a label this big to a label this small. So I don't know if I should put everybody on their own line here up on the front. I'm not sure how I'm going to keep them straight either. Or if I should just go by the length of the uh, of the name and have it go down or have it go up. Or if I should sort of just put you know, fill it up like bricks, but then everybody's name kind of gets jumbled, jumbled into everybody else's name. Wow, oh, Kevin Lavis has contributed five pounds. Thank you, Kevin. Um, hmm. I don't know. I need some suggestions here, guys, for how I should do that. Because I know if I do it this way, they're, they're going to be kind of sideways and crooked. It's not going to line up. It's not going to be pretty. The other thing I was thinking, like I said, if we did it on this bar going down, although some of these names are too long to fit on that, aren't they? Hmm. Hmm. So much for that idea. Go small to big, side to side. What do you mean side to side? I still can't get over those numbers. Almost 6,000 on the read, over 4,000 on the right. Uh, the link to the build video is in the video description below this video. If you guys missed this build, you should ch definitely check it out. It was, a, it was a real challenge, certainly getting the, uh, the little heat sinks put on the M2 drives. There's three M2 NVMe drives. And luckily, someone in the chat called me out on it before I powered it up because I, I had put the little heat shields on incorrectly. And then uh, getting the uh, NVMe drive to boot in RAID mode was quite a challenge. We did all that live. And then the other issue I had, uh, after I updated the BIOS last night, it wouldn't boot anymore because it lost the RAID array. So I had to go back into the BIOS, put NVMe back into RAID mode. It still wouldn't boot. And then I figured out I had to change, for some reason it defaulted to legacy only on boot. I had to change it to uh, UEFI or something like that. And then everything was good again. But uh, let's take a look here. On the front panel, starting from the top, put names on the left side and under, then to the right. I don't know what that means. Did I have the names engraved? Right now, the names are printed. And if they were going to be engraved, um, the engraver would need to know the names anyway. So I'm kind of, if, if I decide to have it engraved, if that's even an option, uh, then that would override these. But these are, uh, as far as I'm concerned, these are, uh, these are what we're going to do. <laughs> so, all right. So anyway, that's the Threadripper there. You can see all the... RGB lights going crazy. Let's get take you back to the main camera again. Oh, I guess I need to put this back onto the streamer. 
Okay. I gotta stop doing that. All right, so. We cut the lights, you should be seeing the RGB a lot better. use acrylic well for right now guys I've got just the labels so we're gonna start with the labels and it may stay that way or it may be upgraded we'll see what the cost is and how complicated going to acrylics going to be my challenge right now is just gonna be to try and keep it as straight as possible and just have to see how this plays out let's see here There's a couple of names I want to put on there. Well, shoot, then it's going to throw off the way it looks if I do that. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to... There's a couple of people I really want to acknowledge above and beyond because these folks have gone above and beyond. And one of those, his name is right here. Peter B. Laycock. And I'm not sure how I'm going to keep this straight. How am I going to do that? Let's see. I'm not even sure how I'm going to be able to get it centered. I don't know. I, I, that's pretty good right there, isn't it? I think that one looks good. I think we're starting okay. It's probably a little, little off center. It's probably not going to be perfect, but I'm going to do my best, guys. Um, another person I want to make sure gets added, who's been a frequent con contributor here. His name is Bill Leatherland. I want to make sure these guys are right up. At, not that it really makes any difference if they're at the top or not, but um, their contributions from these folks has been extraordinarily generous. And I just want to make sure that uh, I send the message back of how much I appreciate that. $5 was contributed by Rob Gurley. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. Use a ruler. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Um, there's somebody else in here. Ah, Colin Hilton. Colin's been very Colin. Colin's been very generous, and um, not only just to me, but also to some charities, and. Um, fantastic, generous, kind, and caring person. Let me make sure we get... Uh, these three people represent almost half of the expense of the build. So just so you understand the level of contribution that's come from them, it's incredibly generous. And I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting any other... I thought there was another... It's very random.
Hmm. Tell you what, let's get these large ones out of the way. There's a gentleman, and his name is uh, John Davidson. And John's watching me from Thailand, and he has a couple of businesses. And let's go ahead and put these on, because they're, they're the, the biggest ones. Just feels a little bit off. Okay, this is this is John Davidson's main contribution right there. And then he's got one more. We'll keep them together. Let's see if we can't zoom you guys in a little bit on this. You think I should put them on randomly and at different angles? Hmm. You know, that's an idea too. Let's go ahead and finish this thought out first. does kind of look like a credits list, doesn't it? Alright. Let's try that and see how it looks. We'll just put them on randomly and in different angles. So here is Bob Thomas. This person just wanted to be known by J77ZZZ. And this person's in the chat room right now. This is Ben DeCure. We're going to put Ben how about right here. And Patrick Johnston. Let's put Patrick right over here. Uh, let's do it right like this. Irving Turkers. Irving's made in, uh, contributions. He's watching us all the way from France. This person just wanted to be known as <laughs> Wet Willy. I'm not exactly sure <laughs> why. <laughs> That's what they want to know. <laughs> That's what they want to know. That's what they want. That's what they'll get. I guess that's what I was trying to say. Let's put, uh, let's put Wet Willy. Gonna try to make it look different. You know, we'll put Wet Willy right up here. Why not? David Gilman. It's gonna focus. I can feel it. It's gonna happen. There it goes. Oh, just dropped one.
Stephen Cicero, or Cicero, I'm not exactly sure how that name's pronounced. Okay, let's go. That. And I think this person's name is a Final Fantasy figure. I might be getting my video games mixed up. This person wants to be known as Chrysera or Chrysera. And this person is Tom Jacobs. And this person is Patrick H. Manny. And let's put Patrick's name Right here. And next we've got George Larice. As I wait for my camera to wake up. Come on, camera. There it goes. I just have to put them over, put the tape over my mouth. Why did I decide to put them on the front instead of inside? Because uh, nobody wants it on the inside. Everybody has asked me to put it on the front. And the more I thought about it, uh, it is their build. So if that's what they'd like, that, that's what they're going to get. And a couple of the names um, are too long, but we could have perhaps uh, talked to some of the people to see if they would shorten their name voluntarily. But pretty much just trying to give everybody what they want. And the people who have contributed, um, they're the people whose names I, or whose opinions matter most to me. So um, bear that in mind, if you would, please. Okay. We're getting there. You'll be seeing this in the background on future builds, so people's names will be on display and future videos in the background. Now this person's name is John Rice. Some longer names here. This is John Jack Wilson Jr. Whoops. Yeah, it's too bad I don't know an artist or somebody that could perhaps take these names down and create like a custom paint job or something, but who knows what tomorrow holds, you know? Could meet somebody new and 
This may not be a permanent uh, fixture after all. Let me back the camera up a little bit here because we're starting to need some more room. Let's see what else. Bob Thompson. Anand Panjwani has contributed $14.99. Thank you, Anand. All right, let's put Bob Thompson. Right here. And this person is John Rogers. John's gonna go right about there, I think. This person simply wanted to be known as Granddad 47. So there you go, Granddad 47. And of course, thank you for your contribution. You can see just how many contributions it took to give you an idea and why the naming ceremony took so long because I had to figure out <laughs> which person wanted which name and then make sure I had everybody and I didn't leave anybody out. Let's see, we'll put Granddad 47. Hmm. Throw him right down here. There we go. And this one is Eric Ganstrom. And of course, thanks to contributions like the one from Eric, everything added up and we, were, we ended up having enough to, to build the system. I feel like I'm starting to run out of angles here, I'm trying to do something different. No, maybe like this. There we go. This person simply wanted to be known as Sterling3371. Where can we put Sterling at? This contribution is from Benet Quinton. Oh, Sterling3371 is there in the chat. You have your official spot right there on the case. Make sure you can see that. So, Benoit, where can I put Benoit's name? Maybe just... Right there. This person wanted their name to be their YouTube channel, so this is... 
Ashley HD. So thank you, Ashley HD, or just Ashley, I suppose, right? If I can get these darn things separated. Come on. And let's put Ashley HD. I really don't want any of them. Well, I guess I got Irving's upside down, don't I? Uh, commit to it. No, I've changed my mind. Oh, you know what I could do? This contribution, or this contributor, is named Christoph Esch. So thank you, Christoph. And this contributor is Frederick Lundholm. Thank you, Frederick. We're going to put you, let's see. Where can we put Frederick? Right there. We're almost done. Bradford Bumpus. Thank you for your contribution, Bradford. Let's put you right there. Still feel like it should be on an angle, maybe like that. Wow, I'm already running out of space some more. There we go. Sorry, I didn't realize you guys weren't able to see that. And I guess last but not least, I feel like there's a little too much room left. Orlando Brave. Brave. And we're going to put Orlando right here. Kind of nice rounded out right at the bottom there. And I think that is everybody. Now, if if some strange thing has happened where I have not included your name and you've contributed $100 or more to this build, in fact, if, if you've contributed $100 or more to the channel, I've got some room left. I'd be happy to add you. You're just going to have to bring that to my attention. You will have my email address, so you'll know how to reach me. And there is our community build. These are all the members of the community who made this possible. Now, keeping in mind, we have 207 people watching live right now, and yet the number of contributors is a very small percentage, which is fine. I'm not, I'm just saying this is how important uh, these contributors are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, somewhere around 34 to 36 contributors um, that has made this possible, although these three are the same person. 
But regardless of that, that generosity and that contribution is all a part of the community and giving and giving back that uh, I'm all about that. I think it's fantastic that so many people um, have the means and have the consideration and the generosity to share not only with myself but with the entire community to enable me to uh, not only do this build but as I mentioned um, the video capture cards, the equipment, the uh, tripods, the lights, the tripod heads, the cameras, you know everything from rechargeable batteries to green screens and camera sliders and lenses the list goes on and on and on and I've been financing it all myself and so all the contributions are helping me um, to move the channel forward faster than I could have done it with YouTube alone. In fact with YouTube alone uh, there'd be a lot less content because I just couldn't afford to keep buying hardware and I don't want to take on sponsorships if I can avoid it so that I can be objective in my views of, uh, or reviews rather. What did I do with my drink? I just had it. Sorry, I'm easily distracted. <laughs> what did I do with it? I guess I just put it back in front of me. All right, so anyway, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, um, to answer your questions now. Douglas wants to know if I have any preferred font style or size. No, just whatever looks good, man. Whatever you think looks good. I'm one thing I am not is a is a uh, is an artist. I'm not good with anything involving painting or design. Uh, I'm I'm a good technician. I can fix things that are broken. I can I can diagnose and repair very complicated things fairly easily for me. But what I can't do is often easy for other people, which is uh, anything involving construction, you know, anything where you got to measure and cut. I, I just, I don't, I don't do well with it. Hello to Sharon Idle and Jacob Alvarez just joining us. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of staggering those names and, you know, and making sure the emphasis on the names that are sort of organized is there. That sort of stands those folks out among the others, which I think is uh, respectful and considerate to those, uh, differentiating the, between the contributors and, and um, somebody said that was a guilt trip to, to the viewers that so few people contributed for the num number of views that I have. It's not a guilt trip, it's a, it wasn't intended that way. It was intended to emphasize the importance and the rarity of those who give back. And if they had not, then this build and many of my other videos, I, I simply wouldn't have had to, the money or the means, the hardware, to make those videos possible. I, I would have eventually gotten there, maybe, you know, this is a, uh, accelerated the process and getting me, getting me closer to my goal and I have been investing so much in equipment lately uh, that I've been sus sustaining and subsiding on uh, subsidizing on repairs and uh, builds but it'll be nice to get back to having some extra income to go and buy some parts and do independent reviews with those parts and tell you what I what I find, you know, with my opinion. So, for example, coming up, I'll be testing the, uh, I'll be testing a generic no-name brand, you know, no, well, it's got a name brand, but it's nobody you've ever heard of before, uh, NVMe drive, a 500 gig NVMe drive for $129.95. Is it worth buying, or uh, should you spend a little bit more money to get Samsung or Western Digital are one of the big names. I don't know. So I've purchased that out of my own money and we'll run the tests. We'll see how it performs. It has the same five-year warranty as everybody else. And um, we'll just uh, we'll try contacting the company, see if we can reach them. <laughs> That's the other problem. 
you know, is it worth saving some money if the performance is adequate, but what happens if the drive isn't reliable? Or if it isn't reliable, what happens when you need support and they're not there or they're not helpful? How much is peace of mind worth? So I guess it depends on what you're building. You know, if you're building a big rig like this, you don't want shortcomings and, and risk taking with no name brand components. You want peace of mind and warranties from trusted companies that have a history that you know uh, and that I have experience with that I can invest in. But if I was trying to build a, you know, a budget rig, then budget parts make sense. But it just means that you might be paying for that budget rig when things stop working in reliability. And you might be paying for it with your time in getting a hold of the company for support. And it'd be interesting how long the company takes when you do get an RMA to send you back another product. Are they going to take just a few days? Are they going to take weeks? Are they going to take months? That is unfortunately a price you might pay when you go the budget way. Um, and it's unfortunate because the people who can least afford it are typically the least technical. And they're the ones that are most likely statistically going to have a problem and won't know what to do. If you're a very technical person, then you can get away with budget parts and reliability doesn't matter because you can fix it, it's no big deal. And, and if you have an income coming in, you throw the part away if, if necessary and replace it with another one and say, well, I won't do that again. But many people just don't have the money to throw the part away and buy another one. So that's why you've got to ask yourself, is it worth it to take that chance to save 20 or $30 on a $130 part? And it's not something I can really answer for you. However, it is something we can kind of look at to see. For example, we could, I could take one of these no-name brand uh, NVMe drives, run the performance test on it, which I'm sure is going to be just fine. And then just start using it and see how it holds up. And if it breaks, then we go through the RMA process and see how that happens. You know, if they're responsive or if they ignore me or if there is internal confusion, like the issue I had with a company called Team Group. Now, Team is the company that um, makes this RAM. And then last night I swapped out, there's a 500 gig Western Digital Black hard disk drive that I had in uh, this case, and I took it out and swapped it for a Team L5 500 gig, two and a half inch solid state drive that I picked up really cheap. So I don't care if it breaks. It's just sort of like a spare machine, and, and it's a good way to test, you know, was the Team issue unique? Was it a fluke? Or am I gonna go through this again? And so when I'm building machines, and this is the distinction I wanna make for you guys. When I build machines for customers, they're, my customers aren't guinea pigs, so I only use trusted name brand components that I have experience with. When I'm building a machine for myself or uh, for you guys just as entertainment like this, you'll see I, I'll use parts I don't normally use because the only person that's going to negatively affect is me. And if these parts turn out to be really good, I'll start recommending them for my clients. I hope that makes sense. And five pounds has just come from... Kevin Lavis, again, he says, my Samsung 860 Evo SSD has about the same read and write as that Threadripper build. No, it doesn't. You probably have the um, rapid storage turned on on the Samsung SSD, and that is a cached, you know, it uses some memory to cache files. So when you do a, a speed test on it, it's just caching the data, and it's not real. The numbers you get aren't real. Those numbers I showed you are real. And if I turn caching on, they'd probably double or triple or quadruple, so there's no need for that, because caching, unless you're loading the same data over and over, in many cases actually hurts your performance, but when you run your benchmarks, you think it's faster, and so that makes the, the end user happy. Remember, what benchmarks say is really not important, it's how it performs to you. Michael C. says, I can't wait for you to do the build with your client from yesterday. Yeah, me too. Me too. He seems like a really neat guy. That was the very first time I've ever met him. And, you know, I'm a little nervous about bringing people into my house, especially people I've never met. But uh, as a referral from a trusted longtime friend, and um, that person is a very good judge of character, obviously. Uh, the gentleman from yesterday, his name is I.L., like the state abbreviation for Illinois, I.L., and I.L. is just a fantastic human being, isn't he? I, 
first impressions make you know all the difference and it's funny because I answered the door in my t-shirt and I saw IL was all dressed up and I said oh you're dressed up I got to go put a button down shirt <laughs> but yeah I, I hope that he follows up with me I was looking around to see if there was maybe a machine that I could uh, I don't know throw his way um, but I don't think he he's in a situation that's bad financially so um, and I also think that the build together would be more fun and he'll get a better computer and the experience will be you know will be a much more learning experience and so I was kind of thinking about this last night we'll see if he follows up with me I hope he does I really does he, he really enjoyed himself he had a good time and you guys were just awesome and um, and hopefully we can make some more videos like that if there's uh, other folks I meet around the Phoenix area that want to become famous we'll bring him into the Holzman kitchen and uh, put him to work what do you guys think Carrie, do you like old school rap music like Easy E? It's not my favorite, but sometimes I hear it and it's nostalgic. Colin says, thank you everyone for contributions for a well-deserved appreciation for Carrie's devotion to his followers. Well, thank you, Colin. You're just, just a super guy. Dennis Tenhoof says, I dislike Team Group. That's the company that makes this RAM that I was just talking about. I dislike them so much. I used to work quite a lot with their products. Yeah. Oh, I Steve, C Steven Sacero. I'm not sure how to say your name, Steven. Why are you not a moderator? Let's fix that. There's no point in showing off the lights, right? I mean, we want to show off the names. This is the RGB I like. I got to think of what the RGB stands for. Real great benefactors. Steven says, I built it just so you could enjoy building with parts you normally don't use. Yeah, Steven, that's exactly why I built it. I would really love to start using it. The problem is I have to buy, I, the folks at Cyberlink, they gave me a copy of Cyberlink 15, then they gave me a copy of, uh, I'm sorry, PowerDirector 15, then 16. Then I upgraded the streamer to the Ryzen build, again, thanks to contributions. And I reached out to Cyberlink's uh, uh, PR department and I said, hey, can you give me a, another copy of Cyberlink PowerDirector 16? And they, they did. I don't want to be a pest. I don't want to ask them for another copy to throw on here. I just, I feel terrible doing that. So I'll probably see if I can throw the funds. It's only like 60 bucks for it. And then, um, and I got to solve this fan issue. This fan's going to drive me nuts. It's just, it gets way too loud. That's the only complaint I've got with it. This thing's smoking fast though, really fast. Maybe the word smoking isn't what I should use. What do I charge for labor to build a computer? Normally I don't charge anything for labor. You're just gonna pay for the shipping. As long as I can make a video out of it, you'll have to reach out to me personally um, to make arrangements for that. And Catherine Anna Hauserman, who's one of the moderators in the chat room, she'll build you a parts list absolutely for free. Tell her what you want and what your budget is, You know what your intent is for the machine and let her put together a parts list for you. And then if you want to reach out to me with that parts list and ask me what I think about it, again, telling me what you're going to use the PC for and what your budget is. And then if you want me to build it, we can work all that out. I, I love doing it. I, I think you're really doing yourself a disservice if you don't build it yourself. 
but I understand people have busy schedules and uh, I'm happy to build it for you. But I honestly think you should build it yourself. It's a, it's a wonderful experience that you won't fully understand until you do it. But if circumstances are such that it's just not in the cards for you, but you want me to build it, I'm here. Let's build it. You will have to be in the United States. That's, that's the only caveat. Because of tariffs and uh, import and export taxes, it's just not reasonable to uh, have me build it. It will end up costing you a lot more money. No matter how much you think parts are in your country, if you're outside of the USA, trust me, it's cheaper for you to do it locally than to buy it from me. And then there's a huge risk of damage when you ship over the ocean. And then I don't know how you think I'm going to be able to support you. And if you get a box of parts that are completely trashed because they've dropped the box and mishandled it, a lot of times uh, shipping insurance won't cover it unless there's physical, significant physical damage to the box. What they'll say is you didn't pack it good enough and that's on you. Getting a shipper to pay insurance is extraordinarily challenging. So again, uh, for your safety and for mine and to ensure that you have a good experience, if you're outside of the USA, uh, you have a couple of options. One, buy and build locally, whether you build yourself or have a local person build it for you. Or two, or three now, right? Three, pay me, fly me out to your country, put me up in a hotel, and I'll, you and I, I'll bring my camera equipment, you and I can film it together at your place, and uh, you don't have to pay me anything. I just need the transportation and hotel costs taken care of, and I'm happy to see the world. I got my passport. I'm ready to go. Let's go. It'd be cool if the names were in RGB in the background. I agree. I'm not quite sure how we would do that. Kenny Roberts says, I don't have good motor skills in my hands, so building a PC is a no-go for me. I totally understand. There's people with uh, visual disabilities and, and other, uh, you know, uh, arthritis and other things that can make building a computer very challenging. And I'm simply stating that if it's possible, you know, if it's an option for you, you should really consider it because it's such a great feeling of fulfillment and accomplishment when you get it up and running. But like I said, I'm happy to build it. I'm very happy to build it. Carrie, if you have free time, do you ever play old games? Yeah, I got, let me tell you something. Let me tell you about electronic games. If you don't know how to play this game, you're not a gamer. Oh, they trap me. Who remembers this? It's hard to do it when it's backwards. Oh. Now that's a real game. Look, the instructions are just there. This is how you play. It's not a booklet. There's no internet. And if you want to play with your friend, you just switch the switch over to number to two player right there. Now we got two player right there. You want to see the score? You push the score button and that lights up and tells you the score. That's how we roll old school, son. <laughs> See, a lot of people had that game, yeah. Hack a vacuum display and display people's names on it. Well, I tell you what, if anybody wants to do that and send it to me, I'll be happy to display it. But I don't have the skills or the time for that. 
Mark's brother 715 contributed one dollar and ninety nine cents, and then has left a comment that says twenty dollar or twenty twenty point zero zero. I'm not quite sure what that means, but if you want to elaborate on that, I'd be happy to uh, understand better. Thank you for the contribution, just the same. Have you thought about what you're going to use a Threadripper for? Um, obviously, it'd be great for video editing. But again, I got to get the software for it. So that, that's what's holding me up right now is software. Somebody named Dan is putting their email address in the chat. I don't know why you're doing that. It's strongly advised that you not do that unless you like to get spam. So if you have any questions, now would be the time to put it in the chat. If you've asked earlier and I missed, I probably didn't see your question, post it again, please, and I'll do my best to, to uh, address whatever questions you have. And then we're going to wrap this up. And why am I standing in front of everybody's name? That's really, really rude of me. I mean, I need to stand right over here. I'm very proud of this, and I'm so, so happy. Um, it seemed like for the longest time all I was dealing with was trolls. And I was really at a point where I was wondering why I was doing this. And then you guys came along and you know I had this time and I thought this would be fun just to do a build for fun. Because all of my builds are for business and I'm just sharing them with you. I'm just turning a camera on for work I've got to do anyway. And I'm very serious about it because you know my whole livelihood depends on the computer being a good price, being reliable, being fast and looking good. So this is the first time in a long, long time that I've built just for, just for the sake of building, for no reason whatsoever, other than because I could. And I don't know how to say thank you enough for you guys who made that possible. And I, and I hope you guys really enjoyed the build. I hope you go back and rewatch that build a couple of times. You know, with Mitch's help doing the filming, that was extraordinarily helpful as well. And to build it outside. Who builds computers outside? Where have you ever seen that done before? So again, I'm just trying to mix it up a little bit and make videos that I want to see, and I hope that you guys want to see them too. Douglas says he's going to work on a layout for this. I think that's great, Douglas. I Please do. Tales to Gamers says, greetings from the Netherlands. I was curious about the overall cost of the build. It was somewhere around $4,300. I can't remember exactly. And remember, I didn't even fill all the RAM up. I can still double that RAM if I really wanted to spend some more money. But um, yeah, the, the Seasonic power supply was pretty pricey. That motherboard was pretty pricey. This cooler was pretty pricey. The CPU was almost $1,000 all by itself. And then the three NVMe drives were about $600 because they're only 500 gigs a piece. But with three of them in RAID 0, that's 1.5 uh, terabytes, which is pretty good. And if I use it for, for video editing, I'll have to throw another hard drive in here. Maybe on the other side, I can slap a... Back under here, there's a drive cage. You can't really see it. There's a traditional 3.5-inch drive cage right under there. If I throw a 3-4 terabyte drive in there to hold the storage files, uh, that would be helpful. But I have to say the Ryzen 7 1700, which is what I'm using right now to stream this to you guys, uh, is working fantastic. It's not like it's a slouch. But I just wonder, because I don't know any better, how much faster this would be. Ron Stewart says, I like the ceremony. Good job and nice PC. Thank you, Ron. Kevin says, I'm going to bed. I'll catch you on your next stream. Hey, Kevin, thank you for joining. Thanks for your contributions, of course, as always. Have a good evening. Ben DeCure says, I enjoyed all your videos. You got me outside of my comfort zone and to do something I didn't think was possible. Awesome. I'd love to hear that. I want to see a drunk build. All right, Daryl, uh, you provide the parts, and I'll get drunk and build it for you. 
see how that works out. Colin is taken off. Hey, Colin, thanks for joining us and uh, thanks for all your support. I've been looking for um, some old two gig flash drives. If you have any old two gigabyte flash drives and you want to get rid of them, I would love to have, uh, I don't know, it'd be nice to have about five or six of them. The reason I want the little two gig flash drives a lot of them still have the LED that lights up for reading and writing, which is almost absent now on, all, on almost all flash drives. Uh, but also because a lot of the things I use flash drives for are, are to make them bootable for small utilities like Memtest 86 or a Cronus uh, Rescue Disk or um, uh, there's a couple other things. Uh, uh, you know, to put uh, BIOS files on when I want to update uh, a BIOS to flash it. So it's great to have these little flash drives for that. So if anybody's got any laying around you don't want, please reach out to me. I'll give you my address. I, I couldn't have too many of them. They're just very, very useful. And I know I can buy the 16 gig ones and just use a couple hundred megs out of them, but what a waste of money. And, and again, a lot of them don't have the big flashing lights. That's what I want. I like the big, I can see that it's reading or writing. Kind of upset that they're sort of taking that away now. Mark's brother 715 has contributed $19.99 and says, great, awesome videos always. Oh, thank you, Mark's brothers. Ricky Saunders has contributed £4.99 and says, happy gaming. Well, thank you, Ricky. They sell one gig flash drives on Amazon. Yeah, I don't think they have lights on them. I think they're the like the red Lexars. Uh, the ones I really liked were by a company called Silicon Power. I wish I would have bought more of those. Carrie, is the power cord braided? This is the HDMI cord going to the video capture card. That's braided. That's from Amazon. They sell them in a, in a two-pack. Trying to figure out, where did my video go? I think the computer went to sleep on me. Well, not. I, I have the monitor um, turning off after 10 minutes, so I think that's what's just happened. So let's get that back on. There we go. That ought to do it. Now if I switch over, you should be able to see it. Yeah, there we go. And we'll power it off. You guys can watch how fast it boots up. Here we're going through the shutdown process. Am I going to do anything special for hitting 200,000 subscribers? No, I don't have anything planned. Oh, it just got quiet in here. <laughs> Gosh, this thing's loud. All right, let's power it up. Here we go. Start your, uh, start your stopwatch now. Carrie, I think Walmart still sells two gig flash drives. Yeah, you can order them from a company called, uh, it's a company I never heard of. It's got a, it's got a little light on it. And you can get them for about $4.50 a piece if you order 10. I really don't need 10 of them. And I also don't know if these are just, like I can go on eBay and I can buy some cheap flash drives out of China, but they're seven out of the 10 will work and three I'll have to throw into the garbage. Ooh, that's a fast boot time, isn't it? Look at that thing rocking and rolling. Uh-oh. Oh, I did put Windows Insider build on this just to play. So that's a new message. System service exception with NTFS.sys. Oh, I, I wonder if that's a build issue because um, I don't recall, I, I signed up for the Windows Insider build, but I don't recall ever getting it. Let's turn it back off. Here we go. As soon as you see the BIOS screen, I mean, that's taking far too long. It's taking a few seconds. But once the BIOS screen comes up, it should just jump right ahead.
What if I pair some black Noxua fans with the Intermax? Oh, maybe, that might work. It's hard to say. Why is the fan so loud? Ask Intermax. That's the only thing I could say. Ask the folks at Intermax why their darn fans are so loud. Because it's, it's these fans up here that are making all the noise, the radiator. The NZXT fans on the case are almost completely silent. I think I should just go with a completely different cooling solution. That's what I think. I was hesitant to even get that Intermax. I told you guys I didn't like it, but you know I try to keep an open mind because products change all the time. Companies, rather, change their product lines. And sometimes a company that makes junk products one day makes good products the next, or sometimes you just get a bad one. But Intermax has been pretty consistent for me as being very disappointing and expensive. I wouldn't be as disappointed if they weren't so darn expensive. But price has a lot to do with it. I pay more, I expect to get more. Let's run this heaven benchmark on here. Insider builds are risky? Yeah, well, why not? Why not be a little risky with a machine that, it's not a production machine, it's just a machine for fun. So I don't mind the insider builds. I threw insider builds on the uh, M1 case too. But you can always turn off insider build. It's not a big deal. It's not like it's one way only. Call Intermax and tell them to send you a new one. I don't think there's any problem with it. I'm sure it's running exactly the way Intermax has designed it. So what am I going to do with another one? I always buy silent fans. The fans that come with all-in-one coolers are always really loud. This is true. This is true. Which Insider version, fast ring or skip ahead? Um, uh, probably fast ring, I would assume. Pretty nice frame FPS on there. What is the brand of wireless microphone you are using right now? This is a Sony wireless microphone. It's a UTX-82, and it sells for right around $600. If you buy a $20 wireless microphone, you're going to get $20 wireless microphone sound out of it. And the microphone is expensive, but it's totally worth it. I, I probably spent $600 on microphones, wasted my time trying to get better sound out of them, and then finally spent $600 on a microphone, and wouldn't you know, it works really well. Same with the video capture cards. I was struggling for the longest time, if you guys remember, with these USB capture cards, and I had an internal one from StarTech and had all kinds of driver issues and the certain kind of limitations. And with this $900 Magewell four-port quad HDMI uh, internal PCIe, video capture card. Look at how smooth everything is now. Uh, I can have up to four inputs. I can have four cameras or three cameras and uh, the output of a PC or the output of four PC. It's just amazing how well it works and it just works. Uh, the only, only downside is Skype doesn't see it. So I still need a webcam or something for Skype or you got to use a paid software like XSplit which can emulate the, the video driver that Skype is looking for. The USB capture cards from Magewell I was using, those did work with Skype, but they would randomly freeze. They got really, really hot. They were just a little too unreliable for the level of videos that I'm doing. If I was just Skyping friends and family, it probably wouldn't matter much. But when you've got an audience of several thousand people, um, it tends to make me look a little foolish. More so than I normally do.
you should run the superposition benchmark. I never heard of it. Can you post a link? I'd be happy to run it. Is that the TR240? No, I think it's the 360. It's got three fans up there. Two gig flash drives are two pounds, 96 pence on eBay. But again, if they're coming out of China, they're junk. I'm looking for like a name brand, like Transcend, Lexar, Silicon Power, A-Data, a name brand flash drive, not this stuff coming out of China. That stuff coming out of China is absolute junk. So there you have it. You can see all of the specs are listed there, the model, the GPU, all listed on the screen, our, uh, our score. Dennis has just provided me with the benchmark software. Let's grab that. Free download. Wow, that's a big download, isn't it? All right, that's downloading now. It's going to be a while. Okay. Nick says, I have a PC that the hard drive keeps failing. The motherboard and hard drive have been replaced. The motherboard once and the hard drive twice. What's the problem? Who knows? They may not even be related. Hard drives and motherboard problems are generally not related. It's like saying, I just had the engine replaced in my car, but I keep getting flat tires. Uh, I would say there is no known problem. It would uh, be pretty darn complex if those two things were related that would require some intense diagnostics that would probably cost more than the value of the computer in time. So based on the information you provided, there's no way I can give you any help. But if I had the machine in front of me and I could see it and maybe understand things from a technical level, uh, I might see something differently than you're seeing it. Sorry, I can't help you more with that. Have you ever used verbatim flash drives? Yes, I like verbatim flash drives, they're fine. But for me, the, I like the little flashing, I like the LED. Uh, how's Subaru Mike doing? Subaru Mike's fantastic. Fantastic. Just saw him yesterday. John R. says, I haven't said anything to you before, but I really enjoy your videos and live shows. It's helped me in my IT career. Awesome, John. Thank you. John Yashuda's contributed $10. He says, great machine and nice ceremony, Carrie. I sent you an email. I hope to hear from you soon. Keep up the great work. Thank you, John. I really appreciate your support, and I will get back to you. Uh, if you send me an email, you will get a response to me. I promise. Freedom Flights has contributed $4.99. He says, can you please explain what the Windsider, the Windows, <laughs> Windsider? What the Windows Insider program is. Uh, the Windows Insider is just a way to get the current versions of Windows 10 that are in production that they're working on. They're, uh, every spring and every fall, Microsoft releases a new version of Windows 10. So we're on version, we're coming up on version five, I think it is called Redstone. Redstone 5, if I'm not mistaken, should be coming out next month. So if you want to get an early look into what the new features are uh, and test it, it's all free. When you go to your Windows Update in your control panel, 
you can choose the Windows Insider program. But understand that you're using half-baked software. It's not fully cooked yet. So there could be problems. And it's your job in return for Microsoft giving you these early looks, Microsoft is asking, they're not demanding, but they're asking for you to report any problems to them so that they can get all of that resolved before they release to the public. And that's the Windows Insider program. When you go to Control Panel and then you go to Windows Updates, uh, the win go to the options and you'll see uh, Windows Insider, I think, on the left side of the screen. But if you don't even know what it is, you're probably not of the technical level where you should be playing with beta software. It may be a very frustrating experience for you, but that's what it is and decide for yourself if that's something that uh, fits your interest and expectations. Is it a beta testing program? Yes, it is a beta testing program. Microsoft has more beta testers on Microsoft Windows 10 than any other software ever developed in the history of mankind. So when Windows 10 gets released, each version of Windows 10 has been more tested before it is released to the public than any other software in the history of mankind. So for people to say, well, it's buggy and I'll wait, just doesn't fit anymore in society. It just doesn't work that way. If any bugs exist, and bugs do exist in all software, but the odds of it affecting you with some unique hardware configuration that no other tester had, highly unlikely. The reason you might want to wait on an update is that other software and drivers um, may take a while to get caught up. So there are some folks I've heard who had, for example, an Asus wireless adapter that they added to their computer, and then after they updated to the latest version of Windows 10, it didn't work anymore. And when they asked Asus for the driver, they said, contact Microsoft. And then Microsoft, of course, says, we don't make it. Why are you asking us? Go ask Asus. And then they sit there to this day, as far as I know, with a wireless adapter that doesn't work anymore. It, it's perfectly fine, but there's no driver for it. Now, the best solution to that, in my opinion, because I'm a business-related guy, is chuck it. Go buy another wireless adapter and make sure you don't buy one from a company that does that to you. Go get one from TP-Link or something. They're under 20 bucks if you want a cheap one, and an expensive one is 80. They're not a huge investment. And uh, whether you go with TP-Link, for example, a lot of times the drivers are built right into Windows 10 because the manufacturers work with uh, Microsoft when they're developing the software so that their customers, the, the customers from both Microsoft and the hardware manufacturer, have a much better experience where it just plugs in and it just works. It's been a long time since I've had to install drivers for a Wi-Fi card. For the most part, all the new Wi-Fi cards, you just plug them in and the latest Windows 10 just sees the driver and installs it. You don't have to do anything. But if you want to keep old hardware, you know, if you have, and I don't know how, what the model is on this ASUS Wi-Fi adapter, I haven't verified the complaint, but if it's true, uh, I suspect it's many years old and probably due for an upgrade to make your Wi-Fi go faster anyway, right? I want to tell you guys about something. For Christmas time, I signed up the dogs for a service called BarkBox. So once a month, if you don't know what this is, it's really cool. Once a month, a package shows up in the mail and it'll have a different theme every month. And in the box, there's gonna be a couple of toys, usually two toys and two bags of treats, and then usually one other sort of treat, and it's all to a theme. And uh, you can, it's a subscription service. You can sign up for three months, six months, a year. It gets cheaper, and they're not paying me, obviously, I'm just telling you about it, because I think it's pretty cool. I've been doing this now uh, I think I got the first box in January. And it's good enough for both dogs. I, I, I'm not going to get each dog their own. So it's around $30, $35 a month. And inside of the box, let's see what we, I have no idea what's in this box. They send you an email. 
they keep track of when your dog's birthday is. They'll say happy birthday, you know, and they try and upsell you on a lot of stuff. They have heavy duty chew toys for an additional five or $10 a month. If your dog's a heavy chewer, by the way, I've never seen a dog that wasn't a heavy chewer. So they usually rip these toys apart within hours of them having them, but gives them something to do and better they chew up the toys than my furniture, which they're good dogs and they don't chew up my furniture, but I'm a good owner and I keep them busy. I hate that word owner. The dogs and I, we're partners. All right, so let's see what we got in the bark box this month. It's a jungle out there, I guess, is the... This month, uncover the secrets of the rainforest, where wild toys squeak through leafy jungles and delicious treats and chews are discovered and devoured. Who better to lead this adventure than the wildest wild animal of all, your dog? Follow their lead as they tug, squeak, chomp, and chew their way to the heart of the jungle and the bottom of the treat bags. Isn't that cute? Are my dogs spoiled? Probably. My poor best friend Jake never got a bark box. He died before such a thing ever existed. All right, well, enough about Jake. Oh, I got your bark box, Jimmy. So what do we got in here? We've got what appears to be a frog. Oh no, Michelle is gonna love, she loves frogs. She may not let you have this, boy. Oh, really? That's gonna go right up there. Hold on, I'm putting it up here. You just chill out for a minute, son. Oh, we got a uh, flamingo or something. Oh, I hear Lyle. There he is. Hold on. What else do we have? Dozer. Oh, it's another little frog looking thing. So because they give you one special treat, um, and then there are two bags of treats in here that are different every month. And you get this one special one. What I do is I hold on to it, and then when next month's come, they can each have one. I don't want to give one something and the other one doesn't. That's not fair, you know? So I wait till I have two of whatever it is. And they're generally all the same uh, weight. So even though it'll be a completely different treat, it's, it's all fair. I'm worried about fairness. And then this is Bark of the Wild Boar Pork and Chicken Treats. Bag of treats there. And last but not least, another Bark of the Wild. These are supposed to be healthier, al whoops, healthier alternatives for the dogs, supposedly. This is pork and vegetable blend. And you can see these are slightly different, kind of a little bites there. But the funniest thing, the funniest thing, is I can spend all the money in the world on treats. And you know what the dog wants, don't you? He wants the box. You want this box? You don't even care about the choice, you want that. All right, see you later. And Jimmy, you probably want this bird right here, don't you? I gotta cut the tag off of it before you can have it. Wait, you gotta... Oh, you're back for more already? Really? Okay, but I have to cut the tags off. No, that's rude. Where did you learn to do that? Hey, that's my microphone. No, give me that. You're, you're a stinker. Where did you... No, that's mine. It's... Hold on. Let me take the tag off, you crazy dog. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I thought you were going to be happy with the box. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> okay, you, you can have this one. Okay, go. And your mother's going to be upset at me that I'm going to give you this. You know that. You don't even care, do you? You're like, well, is it her toy or is it mine? Get her a bark box. Hey, that's rude. Where'd you learn to talk like that? Oh, you want to get that? You going to get it? You going to get that? Jimmy, where's your toy? Go get your toy, boy. Get it. Get it. 
They love it when their bark box comes. What can you say? Is Lyle an Akita mix? Lyle does have Akita in him, but he's mostly Chow and Retriever. But he's got a little Akita and a little Keyshound in him. Anyway, that's BarkBox, and you can sign up for it if you have a dog there. It's a pretty neat service. Oh, Lyle's getting his box. Get that box. Get it. I think he was put in a box as a puppy, and he must now destroy all boxes. It's like his life's goal. Isn't it funny that no matter how much I pay for a bark box, he literally wants the bark box. Never been happier. All right. <coughs> That's funny. <coughs> good boys. Good boys. Yeah, sure, a good boy. Jimmy is a German shepherd. He's just a fawn-colored if you type in fawn, F-A-W-N, German Shepherd, and then hit the images button, you'll see a bunch of dogs that look just like Jimmy Jimmy Cocoa Puff. So you have plenty of boxes? No, I, well, when Newegg delivers or Amazon delivers, Lyle will shred the boxes up for me so I can put them in the recycle bin. I don't have to break the boxes down. I just give them to Lyle and he takes care of that for me and earns his keep around here. Jimmy is spelled uh, J-I-M-I, -I, like Jimi Hendrix. I didn't name him that. I don't like giving dogs people names, but uh, my wife wanted to name Lyle Lyle. And Jimmy already had a name, and he was responding to it. I thought it might be confusing if I changed his name. He might know. When you say Jimmy, he hears it, and he responds to it. And I thought it would be difficult for both of us if I changed it. Ben Fitzpatrick has contributed $5. He says, uh, I have a question about my Samsung laptop. I'm going to need you to be a little more elaborating on that. Yeah, ask your question. I'll do what I can. Harry says his beagle will run in the kitchen, every, even if you rustle a bag of Cheerios. Yes, yes. I've jokingly said Lyle's name is actually this sound. In, in his real name is this. You can't spell it, human beings can't pronounce it, but when he hears it, it becomes calling, so I guess that's his name. Uh, I, I hear him, he's outside and he can, oh, here he comes. Yeah, never mind, I wasn't calling him. It's proving a point. Mr. However you say your name and dog. Good boys, good boys. Yeah, typically dogs have names that are two one or two syllables. I don't like dog names that are more than two syllables. So if you think about really popular dog names, they're all two syllables. Lassie, Toto, Rover, Fido. That's when somebody has a, a dog name that's three or four syllables, that's just not right. And there are certain human names that also apply to dogs, like Jake. Jake is a good, you know, fits the dog, um, and Rex. But for the most part, um, one or two syllable names is the, is the rule I follow at all times. I, I really hate it when somebody's got a three syllable name or more on a dog. And I'm not sure the dog really understands anything beyond one or two syllables anyway, but you know, it's, it's the sound they're hearing and the energy of the way you say it. Although they do have a vocabulary, they do they are able to understand uh, different words and things if you spend enough time training them. But I think it's easier with shorter words. You know, even the commands we give the dogs are usually one or two syllables, whether it's sit, lay down, heel, 
paw or shake. You know, it's all typically um, short commands that you bark, if you will. Although you should not bark at your dog. It's not nice. All right, getting back to my chat. Um, He's got a laptop from 2010 with 8 gigs of DDR3 memory and a SanDisk 240 gig solid state drive on Windows 7. Should I put it on Windows 10? Absolutely yes. Yeah, yeah I would. Chewbarka. That's funny, Ben. That's funny. Chewbarka. And Douglas is providing a link to what he is creating a layout for the front of the case. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, it'd be nice if we got a little color and design in it, but on the other hand, we don't want to distract from from the um, from the names either. Now that you mention it, let me see if I can share this with you guys. Oh, it's a PDF file. Well, you know what? You guys can just click on it. The link is right there in the chat, and you can see it. And we'll make sure that that uh, stays available there. Looks like you nailed all the spelling. Everything I'm looking at, I'm not... I haven't seen anything misspelled. I love that attention to detail. Now what do we do with it? Do you know if Microsoft still offers the free Windows 10 upgrade using the Upgrade Assistant? I wouldn't use the Upgrade Assistant. What I would do is uh, I would install Windows 10 fresh and clean off of a... I've got a video that shows you how to download the official Windows 10 ISO file and how to make that into a bootable USB. Boot to that, install it by clicking I don't have a product key as I've demonstrated how to do numerous times here on my vlog. And then after you get it installed, then enter your Windows 7 or your Windows 8 product key once you make sure you've got network activity, you know, you're connected to the internet. And it should activate using a Windows 7 or a Windows 8, 8.1 product key. That much I know. If you do the upgrade assistant, it may not work that way. And if you try and enter the product key during the install, it may not accept it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So to just play it safe, I would do a clean install because throwing Windows 10 on top of Windows 7 or on top of Windows 8, it's not ideal. Anytime you put an operating system on top of an operating system, you're not going to get the cleanest, most optimal, most efficient, most reliable installation. The only way you're going to do that is with a clean install. If you're not willing to do that, then I wouldn't upgrade to Windows 10 until you are ready to do that. Or take your chances and see what happens. It'll cost you nothing to try. Damien says, I like your work. Well, thank you, Damien. Yes, Microsoft has a media creation tool where you can do that as well. There's lots of ways to accomplish the same thing. It's one of the, I've explained that in my personality, I like to do things my way. And one of the things that's attracted me to computers over the years is my approach can be completely different from somebody else's approach and how I do anything from creating a document to writing a batch file. At the end of the day, as long as I'm getting to the goal that somebody else, we're also getting to the same goal, we can take our own paths and it's irrelevant. You know, if I want to shut the computer off, for example, I can create a batch file to do it. I can put it in the scheduler. Or I can go to the start button or I can hit the button on the computer. That's the great thing about computers is there's a lot of, of different ways to accomplish the same task and you just use the way that's good for you. What's bad about that is it does make it a bit intimidating for beginners just starting into Windows to understand, you know, if they ask numerous people how to do something, they may get different answers, all of which are correct, but to a novice, very disjointed and confusing. But it's that amount of options and uh, freedom that attracts me to the platform. 
What if I've got Windows 7 Home and got a Windows 10 Pro? Uh, that won't work. It will not upgrade you from 32-bit to 64-bit. You always have to do a clean install. And going from Home to Pro, you would have to pay the additional fee from one version to the other. You can upgrade from Home to Home and from Pro to Pro. That's the way it's always been as far back as Microsoft has done this. That's never changed. You, there's no need to wonder. It's pretty simple. Carrie, is Coffee Lake faster than Sky Lake? Well, it depends. If you're comparing a fast coffee lake to uh, a, 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 I'm sorry, if you're comparing a slow coffee lake to a fast Sky Lake, then the Sky Lake may be faster. There's no such thing as, is this faster than that? You have to be very, very specific when you're asking that question. You can't just say, in general, is a Camaro faster than a Hyundai uh, Sonata? Depends on the engine and the horsepower and the weight that's in the car, um, and the age of the car. You know, if you're taking a 10-year-old or 20 or 30-year-old Camaro and you're putting it up against a brand new modern Hyundai Sonata Turbo, you might find the Hyundai's faster. You've got to really think through your questions a bit more and be very specific if you want a specific answer. If you're going to ask a vague question, you're going to get a vague answer. Generally speaking, the newest chips are the fastest versions of the chips. That's why there are different versions. But they also generally uh, are less power consumption as well. The newer ones use less power. So in almost all cases, if you want the best, then you want the latest. But that doesn't mean you can't get something faster from the previous generation for the same amount of money. So it just depends on how you see the world or how you choose to see it. BH Ringer says, Brytech09 has videos on Windows uh, upgrading Windows 7 or 8 to Windows 10. I, I wouldn't be surprised. You can definitely check out Brytech09, his YouTube channel. He's got lots of videos. Or you could just go to YouTube and just search it. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of videos on that topic. Gary McCraw says, hello. Hi, Gary. Is Threadripper great for rendering? Um, What's good for rendering is having the most amount of RAM, the biggest, fastest storage, and the most amount of threads combined with using a piece of software that takes advantage of all the memory and all the threads and all the, the speed of the storage. So if the editing software you're using is Microsoft Movie Maker, then no, the Threadripper is not any better in rendering than Windows XP. But if what you're using is Adobe Premiere, then a Threadripper is going to be much, much better for editing and rendering than uh, pretty much any other chip out there, barring maybe a Core i9 or something like that. However, um, you have to remember there are no absolutes in when it comes to computers. If you want that, you want to go to the world of Macintosh or Apple. Because what Apple does is they say, this is what you want, this is what you need, and this will meet your needs, and this is what your needs are. They make all the decisions for you. You have no freedom. You make no choices other than how much money do you want to spend over and above what a Windows computer would cost. You'll be restricted where you can go and how you can go and what you can buy and how many things you can buy that will work in the machine. And what you can put on the machine is all restricted. And what this does is it limits the opportunity for incompatibility, failure, viruses, and things like that because Apple locks it all down and controls every aspect of the ownership of your computer. If you like that, then you should go to Apple. If you like freedom and you like choices, then there is no best. There's only what's best for you. And so you have to do your research to figure that out. Or you're basically asking strangers on the internet how to spend your money, which I think is profoundly foolish, because I wouldn't believe anybody on the internet. I've, I've been around since the early days of the internet. <laughs> I've seen it blossom. I've seen it go from something nobody knew what it was into we can't live without it. And the one thing that's remained constant in all these years, never trust anybody on the internet, including myself. If I tell you something, fact check me. Don't just take what I say, or just because you saw me do it on screen, how do you know there weren't camera tricks involved? Or how do you know there weren't certain, certain circumstances that I failed to disclose that don't apply to you? You don't. So nothing replaces real world experience. You can play pretend all you want. You can pretend you're in a job. It's not like having a job. 
You can pretend you're riding a bicycle. It is not like riding a bicycle. You can pretend you're skydiving. It is nothing like skydiving. You can pretend you're eating in a virtual food simulation. It's nothing at all like eating. So anything you see online is absolutely irrelevant to reality. It may plant some ideas, plant some seeds to develop in your brain, but until you have physical experience that applies to you and your environment and, and um, your perspective, only then do you have information that's beneficial and practical to the quality and the value of your life. So just keep that in mind. Everything you're doing on the internet, every single thing you're doing on the internet is entertainment. I mean, sure, you can pay some bills, you know, you can get some work done, but uh, for the most part, the way that most people spend their time on the internet um, is not, is not um, making them wiser. All right, you might get some information. It'll be hard to decipher false information or incomplete information or biased information from plain information. And how you define that yourself is going to vary on you and your culture, your environment, and, and priorities and perspectives. So just keep all that in mind. It's not the same as if I have a piece of, if I have a two by four in my hand, we can all agree it's a two by four. We can agree what sort of lumber it is. And if I hit you in the head with it, it's going to hurt. But we can't do that on the internet. So just keep that in mind. It, it will never be that way. As far as I know, unless somebody invents some kind of technology that I can't even imagine of, um, nothing replaces real world experience. And when you're playing games, when you're on the internet, all you're doing is playing pretend or you're entertaining yourself. But the actual knowledge and wisdom, um, you can get some knowledge from the internet, but it, you don't really know if it's true or not without research and ultimately experience. And experience trumps everything. I don't care what anybody says. You cannot deny the experience that I had. And that's why I sometimes get upset when people attempt to correct me on things that I have actually experienced. You can't argue with me, tell me it didn't happen, because <laughs> I was there, unlike you, and it did happen. So that's the bit of the preposterous nature of the internet and the interaction of the human beings that use it. It's all too common. So beware of that and uh, act accordingly or, or respond accordingly. Dion Cross says, love your channel. Well, thank you, Dion. John Senchek says, uh, Redstone comes out in October, not, in, not next month. Um, yeah, that may very well be, John. Yeah, that may very well be. Um, keep up the good work. Thank you. DJ Appy D says, uh, here's two pounds 99. You got me into computers and now I'm an IT tech. Nice work. Well, thank you, DJ Appy. And I'm always glad to see another tech in the field. It's awesome. Does a Dell Inspiron 580 with the H57 chipset have SATA 3? I'm going to leave that to somebody in the chat room to answer. I'm sure a quick Google search will result in answering that for you. I don't know off the top of my head. I want to say no. I was just trying to think when I saw the first M.2 slot, and I think it was the Z97. I know it wasn't on the Z77, and I'm not sure if it was on the Z87. Well, it doesn't have to be Z, but you know, the, the 87. Um, I looked it up on Wikipedia, and I didn't find anything about when it first appeared. Not that it really matters. But I think SATA 3 came out right around the Z77 time. I'm not sure if it was available before that. I think it was SATA 1 or SATA 2, just off the top of my head. But, but I could be wrong. DJ Happy continues, says, always good vids, Carrie. Well, thanks, and, and always good uh, viewers and, and uh, contributors in the channel. You guys are fueling me. If you want to see more content by contributing and by participating in the chat, by sharing the videos, all you're doing is encouraging me. So if you don't like my videos and you don't like me, don't participate and don't contribute. And if there's enough people like you, I'll just give up. That's how this works.
If I was gonna build a gaming PC today, uh, just like I stated in my video yesterday, the, the Ryzen 5 2600 is the chip to buy for gaming. Uh, it doesn't have a built-in GPU. It does not uh, cost much. It's like $165, I think. And um, it's got a lot of cores. And it's just really good for gaming. Even video, if you're doing moderate, you know, light video editing or streaming, it'll do that. You know, as long as you're not trying to do 4K stuff or 360 stuff or 3D stuff or, yeah. It's, it's a good uh, mid-range level gaming PC. In fact, if you pair it a 2600 with a 3 gig 1060 NVIDIA graphics card and 8 gigs of RAM and maybe throw in a, even a cheap 120 gig SSD, you would have a very respectable gaming PC that would pay, play all the games at 1080. All the games, for now. And you could build it more or less on the cheap. The most expensive part would be your graphics card. Douglas says he's working on a RGB for the primary contributors list on the front of the computer. Okay, Douglas, I can't wait to see it. What version of Windows 10 can I upgrade from Windows? It's the same version. So if you have Windows 8 Home, you can upgrade to Windows 10 Home. If you have Windows 8 Pro, you can upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. If you have a 32-bit version of Windows 8, which isn't likely, uh, some people are running 30. You can never, ever upgrade from 32 to 64. It's just not, it's not possible. You cannot do it. It's mathematically impossible. It's a whole different platform. But that being said, most Windows 8 machines and most Windows 7 machines are all going to be 64-bit. So you would upgrade to a 64-bit OS. Uh, in this case, we're talking about Windows 10. And in the version wherein you're running 64-bit, you have your choice of home, professional, or enterprise. Uh, if you're running enterprise, you're probably a pirate or you work at a corporation and are not working and instead you're watching my videos right now. Shame on you. But uh, most people are running the home version and unless you have a server you sign into or you need BitLocker or something, which I've never run into a customer who uses that outside of a business environment, you don't need to spend the extra money for Pro. But if you already have Pro on Windows 8 or Windows 7, the upgrade to Windows 10 Pro is free. And the same is if it was home, home version. So it's not rocket science. It's all pretty straightforward. It, there's no harm in you downloading um, the Windows 10 ISO image is the same. It's got home and pro all on the same di uh, installation. I was going to say disk, but we're making USB flash drives now. But you could make a DVD, I suppose. But uh, yeah, anyway, it costs you nothing to download it and try it. So I don't know what you're afraid of and why you're asking so many questions. Just do it or don't do it. What are you worried about? It's going to work or it's not going to work. It costs you nothing. Again, information on the internet is completely pointless. It's only your own personal experience that matters. And given that this personal experience will cost you zero dollars and zero cents, why are you sitting here asking questions when you could actually be doing it? I've seen people argue and debate the results of a test the potential results of a test. A test that would take 10 minutes to complete and know the results. I've seen people argue for over two hours over what the potential results could be. And it frustrates me. I'm like, would you guys both shut up and just do the damn test? And let's see what the results are. This is pointless. It's a complete waste of time to talk about what if. Just do it. Will I be doing any more scammer videos? Oh, I suspect there'll be more scammer videos in the future. They're, they're cheap to make. They're fun. I enjoy it. And um, as long as they're scammers, I, I want to mess with them. That's it's my thing. It's, it's my wheelhouse right there. Oh, it's past your guys' dinner time, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry. We gotta get you guys some food. 
All right, well, dogs are telling me I got to wrap it up or they're going to bite my butt. And then you won't be hungry for dinner. No. All right. You want to say goodbye to everybody? You want to say goodbye to everybody? You want to sit? Pa? Oh, he's a good boy. Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? Oh, look at this big boy. All right, guys. Jimmy says, enough of this already. Why do you have dogs if you ignore us? All right. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for everybody who's contributed. Let's give a shout out to everybody one more time. Peter B. Laycock, Bill Leatherland, Colin Hilton, J.D. Beveridge in Thailand, John Davidson in Thailand, Zone Tech ONG Consultants in Thailand, Ben DeCure, Wet Willie, Bob Thomas, David Gilman, Patrick Johnston, Chris Sierra, Stephen Cicero, J77ZZZ, Patrick H. Manny, George Larice, Tom Jacobs, Irving Turkers, John Rice, John Jack Wilson Jr., Bob Thompson, Sterling 3371, John Rogers, Granddad 47, Eric Gangstrom, Benoit Quinton, Ashley HD, Christopher Ash, Orlando Brief, Frank Lundholm, Bradford Bumpus. I think I got them all. You guys rock. Thank you so much. I can't wait to continue to see what tomorrow brings with the channel. A lot of uh, different video ideas. I just have to get the time together to get it done. Got some uh, hardware reviews coming up. And um, I'm hoping to be able to, uh, you know, with, with most of the equipment that I have now um, being equipment that I needed, now I can maybe focus some of these YouTube revenues on buying some hardware to just test it out and see what happens. Then I don't know what I'll do with it. I'll figure something out. So maybe we'll, I don't know. Like, it'll be interesting to see what tomorrow holds. <laughs> anyway, the last thing I want to have is a warehouse full of parts like some of these other big tech channels. I'm not doing that. Uh, we'll be selling the computers or donating the computers or helping people out locally. We'll figure it out. But in the meantime, you guys make it all possible. Thank you so much to all my moderators. Thank you, everybody, for keeping it uh, civil in the chat room. And for everybody who's contributed during this podcast uh, or vlog, it's not a podcast, thank you for your contributions. And of course, my gratitude, never ending gratitude for your support. Um, there's enough trolls out there. There's probably 10 trolls to every supporter, maybe more than that. I'm sure there's probably 10,000 trolls to every supporter. So that's why you guys are rare and valuable to me. So thank you again. I'll see you all again very soon. Until next time, bye for now. Okay, now I can push this button right here.